Carpe Diem VPN. Seize the network. In this video, we'll tackle the orchestration plane, the vBond, and then some deployment considerations for the vBond orchestrator. First, let's talk about what the orchestration plane is and what function it serves in creating the SDN fabric. To do that, let's take a look at the config of one of our WAN edges. In order to onboard any device to the fabric, there are just four pieces of information that are needed in the configuration. The system IP, which acts as a router ID. The site ID, which serves to identify to which site a device belongs. The organization name, which identifies the overlay fabric membership. And a VBON definition. Technically, we also need an active interface through which we can contact the VBON, so I guess that's really five things. But notice that nowhere did I say that we need to configure the vManage, or the vSmart, or any other WAN edges. The only thing any device can even have configured is the vBond orchestrator, and that includes the vBond itself. That should tell you right away what the main function of the vBond and the orchestration plane is to authenticate and then rendezvous other fabric devices. You can loosely compare this to an NHRP server in DMVPN Phase 3 or to a rendezvous point in multicast. Instead of defining a list of the fabric devices on every other fabric device, only the vBond is identified and the vBond's responsibility after authenticating is to inform the other fabric devices of each other and how to reach them. Uh, it should be clear here, WAN edges don't learn about the existence of other WAN edges this way, nor will any data plane tunnels be set up as part of the vBond's job. That's what vSmart is for. So let's step through that now. In the beginning, there are no connections, no fabric. The controllers and WAN edges exist separately and with zero trust, as I explained in my SD-WAN zero trust video. It all begins with the vManage importing the vBond and delivering the device whitelist. I'm not covering certificates now, so let's assume that all the certificates are signed and installed correctly as part of the process. Now the different SD-WAN devices try to contact the only configured controller, which is the vBond. The vBond needs to consult the whitelist from vManage to determine if these devices are authenticated. If the devices are authenticated, they're allowed to join the fabric. As part of the onboarding process, the devices are informed about each other and vManage to build the control connections. One of the other functions the vBond serves is similar to a stun server. That is, it helps set up control plane tunnels by being aware of what devices are behind a NAT and sending that information when many, making devices aware of each other. And what does that look like? Well, let's step through that process. Here's the normal process of authentication and onboarding for a WAN edge through vBond when there's no NAT involved. Pretty simple, right? The vBond learns the public address of the WAN edge when it connects. It's the same even with multiple transports. On every interface the WAN edge connects to the vBond, the vBond learns the address. So now, let's insert a firewall that provides a NAT, translating a private address to a public one. Remember, the WAN edge itself is unaware that's behind a NAT. It's up to the vBond to detect it. The vBond is able to detect this because the WAN edge reports its interface IP as part of the vBond connection. The vBond compares the IP and port on which it received the connection to the WAN edge's configured IP and port. Let's look at another lab where there are v-edges behind a NAT. You can see how the vBond saw the connection and how other WAN edges build IPsec tunnels to them. So I'm in the dcloud lab right now and I'm going to focus on the outputs from CLI for the vBond and two different WAN edges. One WAN edge is behind a NAT and the other WAN edge isn't but still builds a data plane tunnel to it. So let's step through that process now. First, I'll connect to the VBON and we can look at the connectivity there. Okay, I'm going to focus on site 200 
which is one of our sites where we have the WAN edge with a NAT. And we can see that here. You'll see that, let me scroll up a little bit actually, so that we can see the tops here and see what each column means. So for site 200, you can see that we have a V edge right here, 10.2.0.2 as an example, although the same is true of 10.2.0.1. For the biz internet transport, you can see that it's being natted. And you can see that because notice that the private IP shows this and the public IP shows this. So when this V edge connected to the V bond, it reported its configured IP address on the interface as 10.2.254.6. And the V bond detected that the public IP that was actually connecting was 100.64.2.14. Notice down here for 10.2.0.1, which is the other V edge at that site and is also behind a NAT, it has a different private IP, but it has the same public IP. And the ways we can do this is because also notice that the public ports are different. So the firewall that did the PAT or the NAT overload for these two V edges uh, just assigned different ports, of course, to the translation. So from the VBond's perspective, it was able to detect that the V edges are behind a NAT and then what the public IP and port will be for other WAN edges to establish connectivity to them. Should the vSmart allow that connectivity to take place and pass along that connectivity info. So the VBond will take this information, pass it along to vSmart and then vSmart will actually reflect this connectivity information to other WAN edges. Let's jump into the uh, WAN edge that has the NAT and look at its configuration and then look at its connectivity from its perspective from data plane. All right, so here you can see uh, interface gig 02 is our biz internet color. And we'll get into colors later, but think of colors as just a marking or a way to flag a particular transport. This is an internet transport. Notice the IP address is a private IP. And uh, as we were looking at the VBond before, the VBond saw both the private IP and the public IP. So that's the configuration. Let's look at the connectivity now. All right, and this, is, this lists all of the data plane IPsec tunnels that have been built to the VEDGE. Um, you can see all of them. This is kind of hard to read if you've never seen it before. On the left is the peer or the other WAN edge that's building the connection. Um, and then the source port and destination IP that's the WAN edge that, uh, that's this WAN edge because this is, we're looking at inbound connections. The destination IP is this WAN edge. So you can see that from this uh, V edge's perspective, other WAN edges are building a uh, data plane connection to 10.2.254.6, which is its private biz internet IP. And you can see these other WAN edges, their TLOC addresses, and we'll get into TLOCs a little bit later. So again, from the WAN edge behind a NAT's perspective, that's how the tunnel, data plane tunnel is being built. Now let's go to another WAN edge that's not behind a NAT, that's building connection to this WAN edge and see what its visibility looks like. And let's find the WAN edge we care about, which is these two, 10.2.0.1, 10.2.0.2. And you can see that, again, this is outbound connections now. So the destination peer is the IP address of the WAN edge we're connecting to. So from this WAN edge's perspective, it's connecting to the public IP, 100.64.2.14. And that's how it's going to build the data plane tunnel. And because it was given that information from the vSmart, it'll make that connection 
and uh, it'll be translated and passed along to that V edge that's behind a NAT. And that's how the data plane tunnel will get built. So let's keep building on the things we've learned about how the orchestration plane works and talk about some deployment considerations. Imagine an on-prem deployment where we're running the controllers in a DMZ or some isolated area on some virtual host. There's a firewall providing NAT for the controllers to reach the outside, and the on-premises WAN edge is in another DMZ area. Now this isn't really a best practice deployment, and we're going to see why as we step through this. For now, just pay attention to the inside and outside IPs for the VBOND. The VBOND needs to sit behind a static one-to-one -one NAT because everything else will be configured to reach out to it, so that IP can't change. In this case, assume this enterprise owns some kind of public IP space and wants to use some of it for the VBOND. The enterprise will need to advertise the space outward so that the devices will route to it to reach the VBOND. Now, an external WAN edge tries to connect to its configured VBOND, and through internet routing, it's going to arrive at the firewall where it needs to go. Of course, the firewall performs the static NAT and routes the connection to the VBOND in the DMZ. So far, so good. But before the VBOND responds, we need to understand a potential flaw in this deployment. Let's get back to the WAN edge in a minute, because the other controllers have to talk to VBOND too. And before the VBOND can inform the WAN edge how to reach the other controllers, we need to talk about how those controllers are configured to connect to the VBOND. Imagine if a controller sitting in the same subnet with the VBOND was configured to connect to the VBOND's local LAN address. Remember, the VBOND learns the address of the device and uses that information to tell the other devices in the fabric how to reach each other. Can you see the problem? The VBOND learned the local LAN IP of the vManage, and since that's all it knows, it informs the WAN edge that it can reach the vManage at the private address. Except, of course, it can't. This is an easy problem to fix with design. Just ensure that every controller connects to the VBOND the same way that the WAN edges will. Make sure to use the outside address of the VBOND in the configuration, and that routing will take a path that lets the VBOND learn how to direct remote devices to the other controllers. In this design, we use hairpinning. Since we can't use NAT on the same interface in and out of the device, the VBOND really needs its own DMZ separate from the other controllers. Now, when the vManage contacts the vBond, it does so through a NAT. When the vBond learns the NAT IP and port, it can send that info to other devices for control plane tunnel setup. I can't go into every design consideration for vBond, but I think talking about the design helps cement the understanding of how the orchestration plane works in the fabric. Hopefully you feel that way too. I think we're out of time for this video, but I'm curious to know if this has been useful in learning how the orchestration plane works in Viptela. I'll try to work more towards the ENSWDI blueprint topics little by little. Thanks for viewing. See you next time.